with the Nuffield Group of Wolseley, Riley, MG and Morris to become the British Motor Corporation. Like its new partners, Morris had been cashing in on its heritage. The company had recently resurrected a name first used in 1930. This tag carried with it the distinguished tradition of Morris's hometown. As a boy, I always dreamed of having a Morris Oxford because my choir master used to take me out to run in the country and uh, I always thought when I grow up, I'll have a Morris. We were driving along Tankerton in the year 53. There it was one day sitting in the showroom and I stopped the car and said to me, there's a Morris Oxford over there. <laughs> and I went in and bought it. With waiting lists of up to five years and a price of just under £700, the Delahoys were lucky it was that easy. They christened their new Morris, Joss, and she quickly became a valued member of the family, taking Jack and his wife Maisie on annual camping trips to the continent. The tent, the tent frame, the ground sheet outside the tent, and the ground sheet inside where the beds were and the floor covering. Polly water, jerry cans, two safari beds, two mattresses. Two oh, I used to spend months planning a tour trip because if you go anywhere camping, you can't come home to pick it up. You've either got it or you haven't. To me, a car is an extension of your home. It's another room, but it's got wheels. I took all the maps. But as the years go by, you get so used to your routines. So you know the way and you vary it. Might be up in the hill somewhere and you find a cafe and have a cup of coffee. And the lorry drivers have pulled in and then they say, have you been to so and so and so and so? A marvellous little places that nobody would know wouldn't be marked on the maps. You know. Well, well, this picnic box is now 50 years old and was um, built by my great friend Albert Pearson, the Royal Navy, the Chatham, all those years ago so that we could, we could have everything, everything in one place. I don't understand that. Perhaps that one is wider than that one. Albert, you didn't tell me that. And as soon as we can, to make a cup of tea. Thanks, Albert. Always we were able to make tea. That was the essential part of our life, cups of tea. And uh, I fitted this kettle up right in the beginning. It's just a simple teapot with an immersion heater in, which plugs onto the battery. And in 15 minutes, we've got boiling water. We'd go on moving all the time and she'd say, it's a cup of tea. <laughs> and I'd say, yes. And she'd say, it's boiled, I've made it. So we'd find a pull-in somewhere, you know. It was all rather wonderful. Not all aspects of continental travel were quite as civilised. Toilets in, on the continent, as you know, is very difficult, so we were self-contained. Maisie had her own little peapot. There's the pot. All nicely done away with as she did everything. In a zip bag. There's the toilet roll and there's the pot. Yeah. All mod cons. Jack's Morris Oxford is more than just a car. It has come to symbolise 58 years of happy marriage to Maisie. When I look back, we were very blessed, the two of us, with each other and, and Josh and all that happened. There's a great love between Josh and me and Josh and Maisie, part of family. It's human to me, more so now because I'm sure Maisie's sitting there with me. And she say, you're driving too fast, <laughs> if I ever do. I would never dream of uh, going anywhere without Joss. I would never get rid of it, never. 
I am a car. I am more than a machine on four wheels. I become part of your life. I share your working days and your leisure hours. I am your home on wheels. The Oxbridge connection continued in 1954 with the introduction of the slab-sided Austin Cambridge. Its square alliance reflected an increasing confidence in the two-year-old BMC with a look that would soon be carried across the range. I'm a homely car. I'm the proud possession of you and yours. I keep the family together. I make life run more smoothly. For those families that required a certain class, BMC had more to offer than the standard Morris or Austin. They also had some distinguished pre-war marks to choose from. Tony Evans' association with the Wolseley 1500 started at the age of 18 when his father brought home the new family car. I came home from work and there it was standing outside our semi-detached house in suburbia looking absolutely magnificent, it, it shone all over. The choosing was a family affair because mother had a say in the colour, I had a say perhaps in what was mechanically right uh, and father had a, an overall choice as he had a right to because he was paying um, because he liked the look of the car. It was a little bit cramped maybe for four people but the whole feel of it was so right. Um, the fact that it is such a cosy and inviting interior and it looked traditionally restrained and British and that appealed to us. Launched in 1957, the 1500 was one of Wolseley's smallest ever cars but its compact shell retained all the elegance of grander predecessors. There was something of a, an upmarket cachet to Wolseley you paid a little bit more than for your Morris and Austin and Ford, and for that you had a feeling of exclusivity. We took it for many holidays uh, up to North Wales, and into the north of England, the West Country. Uh, four of us quite closely coupled and packed in together. If you're going to somewhere like North Wales, especially back in 1960, you didn't want your car to let you down. The engine was big for the size of car. Uh, it walked up hills. We felt secure with that much power under the bonnet. Having proved itself to Tony as a young man, the 1500 became an automatic choice when he later had his own family. I was very keen to have another, and I thought Pauline would find it appealing too. It was very comfortable and very reliable, yes, and good for the children too. I think perhaps it was a sense of continuity. When you buy the products of your own country from an industry that's gone back a long way, it's something that you desire. Not to be exotic and foreign. 